Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 425. What exercise do you need to do in order to be healthy? BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. This is a continuation of a discussion that began in our last episode, uh, episode, episode 424. And we were talking about different kinds of exercise that are recommended by different places and people. We follow some of those guidelines, we, we being Dr. Maupin, her husband, and I. Uh, we go to uh, a place called Fitness Edge twice a week for an hour with a, a certified trainer who is helping us to focus on what we call resistance training. Resistance training is exercise that you do to strengthen muscles in various segments of your body. You concentrate on your triceps or your biceps or your thighs or your whatever uh, in one routine of exercises at a time under the guidance of somebody that knows what they're doing, that knows if you're doing it properly, <laughs> your form matters. And our uh, trainer basically says, don't, because our goal is not to bulk up. Nobody wants to become, you know, Charles Atlas. Our goal is to get the best out of our bodies for the longest period of our lives. So I want to be healthy. I want to be uh, mobile. I want to be limber. I want to be able to do, to, to run up a flight of stairs, to walk two miles to the store, whatever it is that life presents for me to do, I want to be able to do it. I want to be handicapped by not having muscle strength. So the fact is, is that as you age, right. you lose muscle mass unless you exercise and unless you have good testosterone levels. Those are the two things necessary for you to have muscle mass. Muscle mass leads to being independent and not having to use walkers or having someone drive you or not being able to go shopping on your own. Basically, if you have your muscle mass and your vision, <clears throat> you can you can live independently, and that's the goal for all of us. Uh, you're saying that just reminds me. I, a month ago, we had an election in Missouri, and there was a huge turnout. I went to my poll to vote just as a bus unloaded from a retirement home in my community. Mm -hmm. 50 people got off the bus. 25 of them had walkers or canes, mm -hmm. and they could barely walk around. I mean, several of them had to have chairs to sit and then have somebody to move those chairs because they couldn't stand in line until they got to their turn to vote. It's and so sad. It is horribly sad, and, and it's brutal. I mean, you talk about a wake-up call. You, mm -hmm. you encounter a cluster of very nice individuals who are old and sedentary, mm -hmm. and they can't do activities of daily living. They, they can't do the things that you ordinarily would do in your life. And honestly, when, you, when you're when you 80, if you've never exercised, and all of a sudden you decide to exercise, that's probably not the time to start. Or and that's not going to save you. Carefully. Yeah, yeah that, and that's probably not going to save you from a lot of this well, difficulty. I don't know. You, you tell a story about a patient that you had that came in who had always been active, a owned That's multiple the key. pieces he'd of property. Always been active, and he'd always been physically active, building things and carrying things, and so he had good muscle mass to begin with. Okay. Then he had surgery, and he was sedentary for just three or four weeks. Yeah. He lost so much muscle mass that he couldn't get out of a chair. Now his his issue was that he didn't have any testosterone. Right. And so we so gave once him. Once he lost what he had, he couldn't get it back. Right, and he. So we gave him testosterone, and he then got out of a wheelchair to a walker. Out, you know, two weeks later, he got to a cane, and then he was walking independently. So he definitely needed the testosterone portion, but he had already been doing the exercise portion. So as we age, all of us will start to lose muscle mass, which puts us at a wrist exposure mm -hmm. for other kinds of injuries, right. for falling, for not being able to stand, uh, mm -hmm. for getting hurt when we do simple tasks, like unloading groceries. You, know, you get something that, that pulls mm -hmm. and calls. And if we don't learn to exercise in order to rebuild that, and if we don't have testosterone, then we're not going to be able to do that. So 
it, it begins to cripple us as we age. We become subject to all kinds of terrible difficulties. And it's not like a that crash can diet. can be avoidable. It's, it's not, not like, like a crash diet. You can't go, oh, now I can barely walk, so now I'm going to really start exercising. I'm going to run a marathon. <laughs> that, it, you know, you have to continue to exercise throughout yeah. your life. If you really want to be healthy at 90 then and to live to 90, you have to continue to exercise even when you don't see that it's keeping you really like massively muscled, yeah. it's just keeping you with healthy muscle mass that's that's keeping you mobile. But in addition, there's so many things that exercise does, even if it's just two to three times a week for an hour. Yes. And it I, is weight weight bearing. It's not like my mom would say, yeah, I exercise today. I'm like, what did you do? And she goes, well, I ran up and down the stairs three times. I'm like, yeah, but you were inside a little tiny house mm. all day, didn't do any real walking, didn't do any yeah. real anything except going up and down one flight of stairs three times. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about exercise for an hour. So there are guidelines. And, and you go online, you can find them, mm -hmm. magazine articles, muscle fitness articles, diet mm -hmm. exercise uh, magazines. Everybody has a different opinion, every, a different recommendation. Mm -hmm. Focus on whatever they're focused on. I personally am very resistant to those kind of messages. I'm very yeah. oppositional to standards that people impose. You know, oh, you have to do this. So you put together a list of health-related benefits mm -hmm. that come from following these guidelines. If and you, these are all based on studies. They're yes. all they're all backed by studies that were in the Journal of the AMA, um, uh, November 2018. So just recently. Right. And they so to begin with. Everybody's worried about Alzheimer's when they come to my office. Am I going to get Alzheimer's? Well, to help I wanted prevent to ask you that question, Alzheimer's, but I, forgot. Yeah. <laughs> I want to prevent Alzheimer's, then we have, we have to do a lot of things. But one of the things you have to do is to exercise because it improves your thinking and your memory and does delay the onset of Alzheimer's. So if you were going to get it this year, you've got another four or five years that you'll still have your ability to think. If you add testosterone, you get another 10 years. So testosterone plus exercise equals being able to delay your onset of Alzheimer's longer, and that's proven. It also is a reduced risk of cancer. When you exercise, you're using up blood sugar. Cancer loves sugar. Cancer grows with sugar. If you want to not get cancer, you need to decrease the sugar in your diet and you need to exercise and get rid of that blood sugar and keep it under control because exercise is key to using up uh, blood sugar as energy. So to reduce your risk of cancer, that's one of the ways uh -huh. that you do it and getting to ideal weight. Um, reduce risk of er another cause of um, uh not being able to get around and and not being able to live your life is heart disease. No, the consequence of that. If, if, you're, if you don't move around, Excuse you're me. more likely to develop weight uh, and sedentary muscle muscle loss. So you're more likely to be at risk for stroke and, and heart, heart attack. attack. Right. Excuse so me. You can help mm -hmm. your own self reduce your risk if you continue to move. That's right. And that also lowers your cholesterol and your triglycerides. So those are two things that we measure to see if you're at risk for heart disease, but but they do can they contribute to uh, the benefit of exercise. Mm -hmm. One of the other things is mood, depression, and anxiety respond very nicely to to exercise. Some people actually have to exercise every day to keep their mood up yeah. or to stop the ang anxious thoughts and the anxious feelings. So that's something they actually use almost as a medication instead right. of medications. Well, and sometimes it, it, that's exactly what they're doing. I, right. I had a client one time that, that literally wore out six different Stairmasters. Yeah. Well, I have a friend, if he doesn't exercise every day, yeah. then he does not feel good. Don't want to be around him. Yeah. Yeah, they so become it's very abrasive important. And, and lethargic and attitudinal. Mm -hmm. uh, so a, a depression, anxiety, absolutely. So diabetes. Mm -hmm. and, and this is a connection that has particular relevance to me because of mm -hmm. my family history. Mm -hmm. But it's hard for me to, I mean, I have learned that I have to watch my uh, carb intake and my mm -hmm. sugar intake because mm -hmm. I have a genetic predisposition for diabetes. Mm -hmm. I watch my weight. 
that by itself is not enough. I mean, I'm mm-hmm. learning. It, one of the things that I need to do as a tool for fighting the acquisition of diabetes, watch my weight, watch my food intake, exercise. And I did not know the last part. Right. And That's I, it. That is so important. And what happens when you exercise and you build muscle is that your muscle is the part of your body that burns calories. Mm-hmm. So you have a higher um, a, a higher calorie intake for one day of just sitting still. You know, your basal metabolic rate is just, you're lying still and breathing. You may use up 1,000 calories. You may use up 1,800 calories, depending on how much muscle mass you have. So when we both lost weight and gained muscle mass, we lost fat, gained muscle mass, and lost total weight, our basal metabolic rate actually went up because we had gained muscle. The more muscle you have, the more calories you burn. So that helps somebody who has adult onset diabetes because it makes you burn up those calories instead of being insulin sensitive. It makes you more insulin porous and you make energy out of the calories. Another thing is the uh, ability to sleep. If you exercise regularly, you will sleep better. It's true. And we've, we've done other podcasts on the importance of sleep because when you are asleep is when the brain cleans all the toxins out of, out of its brain, when your body mm-hmm. cleans all the toxins out of your brain. So the garbage uh, of just being alive that builds up in your head every day flushes out of your system when you're sleeping. And if you're not sleeping, mm-hmm. especially as you get older, people don't sleep as much or as mm-hmm. well, they're in tandem. One way to fight that is to exercise regularly. Mm-hmm. And, and the recommendations of whatever you're following for your recommendations most of them average around two, two, two and a half hours a week. Mm-hmm. And, then, and then finally, constipation. Yeah. You're less likely to have problems with constipation if you exercise regularly. If you just sit around and consume, you don't eliminate as readily as easily. Once you know that and you think about, you know, when you're sitting on an airplane doing nothing, sitting in one spot for hours and hours and hours, and think about why you're constipated when you get to your destination. Yeah. Well, you've just been doing absolutely nothing with your body for all that time and and that's maybe the only time people recognize. understand that yeah. or recognize that but when you're sitting at your desk all day if you don't get up and move around if you eat at your desk and you're not doing anything else then your bowels just going to slow down it requires exercise for your bowels to move which you were telling a little while ago mm-hmm. a story about people rocking at the old yeah. folks home. i mean yeah even if you just rock and those of us who have like AD, adhd who are always moving, <laughs> which so drives everyone else yeah. crazy. <laughs> um, but it, we're never constipated. Yeah. <laughs> Our bowels move all the time. So. So, so there are multiple provable, certifiable benefits that come to our health as we age from classic issues that are identified with issues of aging, health, health as we age, that come from exercising. Please pay attention. Please start to do what you can do at the level where you are. Get some guidance. Get some information. Learn what you can do and how you can do it in a way that makes you more healthy, not less healthy. Thanks for listening. We hope you're very healthy in the new year and that you start a new exercise program. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.